Are you tired of plugging in something in your outlet and wish that it could have been a little bit more hidden so that you can push something against your wall a little bit more further? Well, stay tuned, I got a solution for you. Hey there friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So if you haven't watched the video that we released last week, it's similar to the one that I'm creating today. Let's just say it's a part two of that video. So if you haven't watched that, check out this video right here after you watch this one. We all have that situation where we wish that whenever we plug our electronics into the outlet, that the plug would sink a little bit deeper inside the wall so we don't see this sticking out. Maybe you're trying to push your bed or you're trying to push that piece of furniture a little bit closer to that wall, but this little plug is sticking way out and it's just getting in the way. Well, I have a solution for you friends and that's why we need to change this whole assembly right here. And I'm gonna show you how easy to do it. So I wanna introduce to you friends, this Leviton Recess Residential Outlet. Now I'm not sponsored by Leviton. I bought this with my own money so I can show you and create this video to help you out. But if you're interested on this outlet, and the other outlets that I show you within this video, I'll leave all the links on the description down below. Check those out whenever you have the chance. But this is a pretty cool product. This is a 15 amp recessed outlet. I'm pretty sure you might have probably seen this before. This outlet is very useful to have, especially if you're trying to put that new TV set on your wall and the plug on the TV is just getting in the way. So easy to install. All you have to do is change this out and there's a few steps that I'm gonna be showing you throughout this whole video. And there's also a two receptacle version like this, which I'll show you in a bit after we install this one. This outlet is not compatible with every outlet out there. You will need a deep electrical box in order for this to fit. Now you have those shallow electrical boxes. This will probably not work because it requires a few space at the back in order for this to fit and also for the wires to fit as well. So you want to take that into account. So here are the few tools that I'll be using on today's video. I recommend some of these tools. And if you're interested, again, I'll leave the links on the description down below. I have a wire stripper right here. You don't have to use a fancy wire stripper like this one. You can use just a regular wire stripper. I have this volt claw. It's awesome for using those shepherd hooks and also pushing in the wires into those deep areas inside the electrical box. CX screwdriver CX1 I believe which is great for turning that screw onto the outlet and those side terminal screws. Klein tools like here it's interchangeable I have a flat side and a Phillips side wire cutters okay. A few things I want to point out before you ever touch any electrical friends my electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different so always make sure that you're always up to date and current with your electrical codes. Make sure that you turn off the power from your circuit breaker before working with any type of electrical. And if you are uncomfortable with any type of electrical work, please hire a certified qualified electrician. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's video. This Leviton version obviously is a one receptacle version. There is a second version where it is a double receptacle. And this one is by Top Greener. This one is a 15 amp outlet and as you can see in the back, it does resemble like a regular receptacle and it does have a white and a hot on the back, but it doesn't distinguish which one is the hot. So make sure that you read at the back, it says here hot wire, white wire, the color is the same. So make sure you look out for that. The single one, it's very simple. It has a hot terminal, a, a neutral terminal, and it has a ground. This one does have a ground also. This one has this push-in wire connectors, which I don't recommend using, only used for 14 gauge wire. This one does not have a push-in terminal. Okay, friends? So if you compare this side to side, they are the same size, same opening. You wanna take out the cover plate. CX screwdriver. It fits right on the screws. That's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna use my cordless drill. I pull this out. Like what I mentioned, my disclaimer, please turn off the power from your circuit breaker. You want to double check everything with this voltage tester. It's very easy. You're just going to lightly touch the hot wire or in this case, I'll just touch anything just to make sure that everything is not powered. CX screwdriver is perfect for taking these off because it fits perfectly. There you go. So it reduce any types of slippage. So once you take that off, you don't want to reuse any of these shepherd hooks. So you want to do a little bit of trimming. So trim those old 
shepherd hooks out like so so again if you're working with wire like this and you don't have enough and you think it's too short don't be afraid to do pigtail and by using that you can use these wago 221 wire connectors all you have to do is take a piece of wire attach it to one lever and then attach it to this so that you can further extend it out you can pigtail the hot and the neutral wire and the ground wire as well so what you're going to do is to get a six inch piece of wire neutral six inch hot wire and six inch ground wire attach it all to here and then connect it all here so you have a longer um, connection or you can just directly screw it on this one for exit for this video i'm just going to go directly onto here because i do have enough wire and since this is just a mock-up anyways but you do get the picture now i'm going to take my vault claw and it does have a built-in shepherd's hook maker bend those over like that now before I start wiring this recessed outlet, I just want to show you how deep your J box or your junction box needs to be. As you can see from here, this is a three and a half inch deep J box. Now if you have something shallower, I don't recommend. This is measuring to about an inch and three quarters. And you also have these wires that's going to be sitting right behind right here so you want to take into account all that you want to have enough room and you don't want to be shoving something in a shallow box and cramping these wires because this one by leviton does not specify which one is the hot or neutral side but we always know that the gold is the hot and this one is the neutral and this is the ground so we're going to be putting our j hook going on a clockwise direction the reason why we do it in a clockwise direction is for tightening this screw on this terminal it gets tighter and tighter Now we can start pushing this in inside the box. If you do need help pushing these wires in so you don't damage your fingers trying to push and shove that wire in there, the part of the vault claw that's very awesome is that it has a push feature. It has some twist feature in case you want to manipulate the wire the way you want it, like so, in there. And you can use this to push this as deep in there at the back without hurting your fingers. And look how deeper that sits onto the wall. Now about the top greener brand, the double receptacle, is that it is tamper resistant. Take our tape measure. This depth is one inch deep. So to put things into perspective, this is what it looks like on the side. See, that's what's showing. And if we take this out, and we put it on a regular outlet, That's what it looks like on a regular outlet. And let's compare it to the hidden outlet. There you go. There you have it friends, very easy to install, very practical. And if you're interested on the double version and this as well, I'll leave this and the tools that I use within this video on the link on the description down below. And like what I mentioned before, I did create a similar video like this, but using different methods. So check out this video right here after you watch this one. Thank you so much, friends. If you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video.